Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Joseph Ward, and welcome to my own The Shoulders of Giants YouTube channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you share this channel. And that notification button, click that notification button so every time I drop a new video, you will know what's going on. African history at your fingertips through this channel. You're getting biographies of your sung and unsung heroes right at your fingertips. So tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend about On the Shoulders of Giants. Well, you can learn about yourself and we tell our own stories. Peace out. Mary Ann Shad Carey. Mary Ann Shad was born in Wilmington, Delaware on October 9th, 1823 to parents Abraham Doris Shad and Harriet Burton Parnell. Mary was the eldest of 13 children who were not enslaved because Abraham and Harriet were free blacks. Social activism was in her bloodline. Her great grandfather Hans Shad, AKA John Shad, was free from slavery. Hans was originally from Hesse Castle, which was a state of the Holy Roman Empire in Europe. Hans came to the United States as a Hessian soldier fighting for the British Army in the French and Indian War. Abraham Shad was a shoemaker with shoe shops in Wilmington, Delaware and Chester, Pennsylvania. He joined the American Anti-Slavery Society, became the president of the National Convention for the Improvement of Free People of Color in Philadelphia, and was a conductor for the Underground Railroad in both Delaware and Pennsylvania. Because Abraham and Harriet were active in fighting chattel slavery, Mary often witnessed her parents harboring runaway slaves in their home. The Shad family was forced to relocate to Pennsylvania from Delaware because it became illegal to educate black people in the state of Delaware. Upon settling in Pennsylvania, Mary began attending a Quaker boarding school to help complete her formal education. Mary didn't live with her parents while she attended the Quaker boarding school. She graduated the school and returned to Westchester, Pennsylvania where her family lived. She used the education she gained to found a school for black children to provide them with a sound education and a chance for a bright future. She also established schools in New York and Norristown, Pennsylvania. The Fugitive Slave Act was passed in 1850 and it threatened the safety and freedom of the Shad family. In 1853, Abraham moved his family to North Buxton, Ontario, Canada to continue living in freedom. While in Canada, Abraham was elected as the counselor of Riley Township, Ontario in 1858. This election made Abraham the first black man to be elected to a political office in Canada. Mary, along with Isaac, who was a brother, moved to Windsor, Ontario, where she began her activism for free black people coming to Canada and establishing themselves to thrive. In 1849, Mary published a 12-page pamphlet titled Hints to the Colored People of the North, Encouraging Black Self-Sufficiency. She also wrote a letter to Frederick Douglass criticizing black leaders, black churches, and endorsed the use of education to help liberate blacks from slavery. During her time in Windsor, Mary established an integrated school and published a pamphlet titled Notes on Canada West in 1852. Notes on Canada West was written as a call to black Americans to move to the free lands of Canada. Between 1853 and 1854, Mary founded Canada's first anti-slavery newspaper called the Provincial Freeman. She became the first woman to become editor-in-chief of a magazine in North America. Isaac, Mary's brother, contributed to the newspaper and eventually became the manager and was also involved in social activism. The Provincial Freeman circulated throughout the United States and Canada and was an instrument of empowerment specifically for blacks through positive information and imagery. The newspaper was in circulation from 1853 to 1861. In 1855, Mary's interest in joining the Philadelphia Colored Convention was met with resistance due to her stance on blacks immigrating to Canada. To be a part of the convention, she had to be voted in and receive enough votes by a slim margin. During the convention, she gave a speech so powerful that she was allowed extra time to speak. Frederick Douglass feared that she was celebrated but not fully respected because she was a black woman. Mary married a black barber named Thomas F. Carey from Toronto in 1856. The couple had two children, but Thomas unfortunately died in 1860. After the death of Thomas Carey, Mary moved back to the United States with her children 
and was recruited by abolitionists to help enlist black people into the Union Army. Following the conclusion of the Civil War, Mary continued teaching and enrolled into the Harvard School of Law. In 1883, at the age of 60, Mary became the second black woman in the United States to earn a law degree. Mary's age did not slow her down a bit. After completing law school, she became a writer for the National Era and the People's Advocate newspapers, organized the Colored Women's Progressive Franchise in 1880, joined the National Women's Suffrage Association, and became the first black woman to vote in a national election. She died on June 5, 1893 due to stomach cancer in Washington, D.C., but left her mark on the world and the people she touched. She literally dedicated her life to the education and liberation of her people just like her parents did for the Underground Railroad. Miss Mary Ann Shad Carey, we proudly stand on your shoulders. For more information, please visit www.ontheshoulders1.com and to learn more about the On The Shoulders of Giants, a nonprofit organization, visit www.ontheshoulders.org.